Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate you being here. And for our subscribers, hey, welcome back. It's good to have you. And if you're new to the channel, if you're finding us for that very first time, welcome. Uh, consider subscribing, consider liking the channel, uh, consider joining and becoming a member of the channel. And to learn more about me and my company and how we can help take your business to that next level, you know, check out the links below. Now, with that said, our topic for you today it's five gym business strategy mistakes that you're probably making. Five business strategy mistakes that you're probably making. And so if you're struggling, you know, listen up. These could be some things that are happening to you that we want to address and see if we can't take and improve you know, what you're currently doing. And if you're having success, take a look at them and hey, how can we improve? And so number one on my list, it's failing to integrate. And what I mean by this, it's a little bit like saying, you know, ideas are not action. Ideas are not action. Failing to integrate. And I know a lot of clubs that I've gotten involved with over the years and taken them over, and they're not performing, not working. And I walk in and, well, there's a telephone inquiry log sheet way over here. You know, can't find the guest register. You know, where's the needs analysis? Okay, there's really no set way we do a tour. Where's our price presentation sheet? How are we getting referrals? You know, what's our second sale look like? What's our third sale look like? How do we follow up? All of those things are things that need to be integrated. You know, these are all ideas, okay, until we make them action. And so failure to integrate all of this, make sure we get it going. And, you know, one of the things that I would say, one of the simple things here, I'd rather see us make the mistake because we're too aggressive than too passive. Let's get these things integrated into what you do. Let's get your operational plan into the system. Let's take action on it. So failing to integrate is one of the things, one of the common things that I see. You know, the second thing is ignoring the data. And, and maybe even ignoring the data is just part of it. Maybe it's just knowing the data, okay? We have to know the data, and then if we know it, let's don't ignore it. And so I'm talking key performance indicators. You know, you know, do you know, listening right now, do you know what your attrition percentage is every month? Okay, and if we do, what kind of decisions are we making based on that data? You know, what are we doing now based on that data? Do we know how many inquiries we're getting every month? How many inquiries are being set? How many are showing up? What's our closing percentage? Do we know all those numbers? Okay, that's important data to know. What's our personal training penetration? How many folks are we getting? How many follow-up calls do we make every day? So all of this data, we A, we need to know it, but now when we know it, let's don't ignore it. We want to now use it to make decisions. And one of the very simple pieces of data and how we do this is let's just say our sales quota is 100 for the month and we're projecting 75 and it's halfway through the month. Okay, there's an important piece of data. Let's make a decision on it. You know, if we continue in the same path we're going, we're going to finish at 75, which is 25% less than where we need to be. Let's make a decision. What are we going to do to get that up? We want to learn to manage based on objectives. You know, my objective is I want my attrition percentage to be two and a half percent. It's currently five. Okay, what's the decision we're going to make? So know your data, but certainly don't ignore the data. Uh, number three, focusing on processes instead of sales. Focusing on processes instead of sales. And so we have to have processes, right? And they're crucial, okay? But here's the thing I want you to know about sales is that it is the oxygen to your business, okay? And just think about, you know, the room you're sitting in right now, you know, if that oxygen slowly, you know, went away, you know, nothing good would come from that. And same thing in your business, if the oxygen slowly goes away, i.e. sales, or if we don't have enough of it, good things are not going to happen. Okay, so it's about making the sale. Now, more often than not, we're going to do it via the process, but it's about making the sale. So I'll give you a couple examples. Customer comes in, I'm at the front desk talking to them. They've been in before, or they're a former member. 
I might say, well, great, welcome back to the club today. Do you have enough information to go ahead and make a decision on membership? Okay, I'm not focused. They've been, they've been in, they know how it goes. Okay, do you have enough information to make a decision on membership? If they don't, okay, I'm going to pivot the process. If they do, let's sit down and go ahead and get them signed up. But just understand that selling is the oxygen to your business. It supersedes everything. You've got to have it. Okay, but we have to have processes in advance. We need to establish value, but not at the expense of getting a sale. Okay, uh, number four, recruiting the wrong people. Okay, now a couple things I see here. Yes, yeah, sometimes we recruit the wrong people. We've got, just use sales as an example, we've got folks that just have no business being in sales, and they'll tell you that they have no business being in sales. But also, sometimes maybe we've got the right folks, but we've not really trained them, okay? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten involved in situations and the, you know, the owner wants to give some final advice and says, well, Jim, this person is probably going to need to be fired. This person is probably going to need to be fired. You're probably going to have to fire everybody, okay? And in most cases, I, I never do, you know, and not really, not, not as a defiance thing, just because at most of the time, these are pretty good folks. They just never been communicated with. They've never been trained. Okay. And I mean, I've had folks turn out to be some of the, you know, superstar performers. I had one, one guy one time who I was told that should be fired. And I went back and said, well, I'm not so sure that he should be. I think we should give him a shot. And he ended up doing a great job. And I was talking to him one day. I said, hey, how is it that you went from being this person who was on the verge of being fired to being the best person in the company? And he goes, no one, he goes, Jim, no one ever sat down and explained it to me before. No one ever really shared with me what I needed to do and how it needed to work. That was his answer. Okay. So we want to make sure we recruit the right people and go back and check some of our recruiting videos uh, here on the channel on how to do that. But then when we get them in there, let's make sure we train them up. Sometimes we've got the right person. We just think they're the wrong person because we've not trained them. We've not held them accountable. And then last on my list, number five is not including our stakeholders, not in including our suppliers, not including our vendors. You know, include everybody in what you're trying to do. These are great ambassadors. If they're stakeholders in your business, well, absolutely they're a great ambassador. If they're suppliers and vendors, hey, all of these folks, their success is tied to your success. Make sure they know what's going on. You know, refer them business when you can. You know, it's like in a, a regular networking event. But involve these folks in the process so they know what's happening. They will bring to you opportunities. They'll bring to you new sales. They'll bring to you, you know, a host of things. So include them. So these are five things that I see that are typically a mistake. Okay, look at them. You know, are you making that mistake on any of those? If not, great. If you are, great chance to get it fixed. You know, folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. I appreciate you being here. And to learn more about my company, check out the links below. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe. Uh, please hit that like button. Uh, please consider becoming a member. And we'll look forward to seeing you all in that next video.